we need to treat education as an investment, not an expense. We've been treating it as an expense. If there's a slide that I made, right, on how countries have increased their education expenditure over years, and vis-a-vis -vis their population growth, Nigeria increased the population between 1981 and 2014 by 135%, and only increased education expenditure by 53%. Countries like Egypt increased by 1,709%. And that's why we're all going to those countries today to school. But you see, we need to look beyond mineral resources and start to look at the individual that we, you and I, are the assets of the country. If we do not, we will still be on the, right, uh, on the wrong track. I'll tell you something, look, Africa, right, is the richest continent as in mineral resources. The richest continent as in mineral resources. Africa is blessed, right? The whole total mineral resources on Earth, Africa alone has one third. That's 33.3%. Two third of all global mine diamonds, 66.6%, .6 come from Africa. One tenth of all global oil reserve is in Africa. But yet, Africa is the poorest in per capita income. Because of education. What does that tell you? That means that the mineral resources is not, is not the true wealth. You understand? Education, all progressive economies are practicing the knowledge-based economy. And that's what the Asians were not doing in the 70s. They started doing it in the 80s have now, and now have surpassed us. We were doing it in the 70s. We were ahead of them. But when we stopped, they picked up. And today, they're ahead of us. So if you look at the per capita income of all the Asian countries now, they're ahead. And that's because they adopted the knowledge-based economy. If you do not see the individuals, if you don't see the citizens of a country as your asset, right, you will forever be behind.